Hello, good evening and welcome to day four of our daily Red Bull x wrap-up show. My name is Tarquin Cooper and I'm standing in a remote Italian village called Avier in the Aosta Valley where about half an hour ago a certain Kriegel Mara flew over my head gliding down to land just inches from the Aosta airspace. So it's been another extraordinary day that began uh, with a night pass and it's going to end with a night pass and as always to help me unpick the day's event I spoke earlier to Gavin McClurg. Today has been another of those epic Red Bull X Alps days and to help me unpick the events We've got the one and only Gavin McClurg. Welcome, Gavin. Hello, Tarquin. Yeah, we got a lot to unpack. Where do we start? So, Gavin, I think it begins really with Kriegel pulling uh, that night pass at literally one minute before 8 p.m. last night. He clearly, this is what he wanted to be first into Frutigen. This is his hometown. This is his hood. And he's wanted to be there for uh, for it to be as a turn point for 10 years. So clearly it had emotional uh, resonance for him, emotional meaning. And uh, he was pretty emotional uh, when he landed. He did the most amazing, perfect glide. We were watching him come in and we roared out in the cars with his supporters because we were thinking he, he didn't have the height. Uh, and, and then we drove out about a kilometre and thought, we all looked at each other and thought, He's going for it. <laughs> so we all jumped in the cars, raced back to Frutigen and literally just sort of spilled out the cars. And we saw him just literally clear the fence by millimetres uh, to land to an absolute rapturous uh, welcome in his, in his home, home resort, Frutigen. And uh, he was given an absolute hero's welcome. And it was really quite emotional uh, to see, actually. I I've never seen Kriegel quite so overwhelmed as I had. He was wiping away the tears uh, before he started talking to us. There were lots of hugs and embraces with family and friends. And at the time, I remember thinking, is that this is a really bold move of his. It's not just for the, the emotional value of, of, of the psychological value of getting to the turn point first which clearly he wanted to do. Could this also be a, uh, a magic move? The start, if he could get a couple of hours on, on Max Pinot, uh, this was a really bold move from Kriegel, get up into the air, and maybe we'd see great things of him getting away from, uh, from the pack. Uh, and Gavin, you, you, at the time, I remember talking to you about it, and you said, oh, no, 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 you thought it was a mistake. Um, what's your view now? Tarquin, I've, I've flip-flopped on this several times already. It's beginning last night when he called it, I thought, man, that's a questionable move. But I get it. He's got two night passes. He wants to get in first. He really likes to be out in the lead. He, he says he flies better and makes better move when he's by, moves by himself. And he's, you know, he's won a lot of these. So you can't really doubt him. But then this morning, it really looked like Maxime and the, and the pack right behind him. And Powell and Tangy and Aaron were right on his heels. And Patrick was just behind there. And so I, I, then I thought, oh, I don't know if he should have, you know, gone with the less sleep. And it seemed like kind of a risky move that wasn't going to pay off. But then he got to Neeson about an hour ahead of Maxime. And by the time Maxime got in the air and you know how Maxime moves, they all actually ended up flying up here. They launched low and flew up, whereas Kriegel had to walk all the way. And it's a, you know, it's a couple thousand meters. It's a big haul. And so more exertion from Kriegel than the others. But then by the time Maxime was in the air, Kriegel had him by 20 K and I thought, okay, there you go. It's, it's a magic move. But then not too much later, about an hour and a half later, Maxime had caught him up. And so I don't know where the team stands on that, whether it was a move that paid off or not. And as the day has gone by, we just saw land, top landing after top landing after top landing up here in Neeson. So people exerting less, but still big days for everybody. And the top landings I saw up here today were the 0.1 of 0.1%. It just shows how skilled these pilots are. And uh, the ability here with these athletes is, is really through the roof. So Gavin, can you give a sense of the atmosphere on top of Nice? And what was it like to be there? Oh, it was so exciting, Darkwood. I mean, this was one of the best days of the X-Alps I've had. And I'm not even racing. It was 
Fantastic. I mean, I, you've heard you say electric a bunch of times. It, it was electric up here today. The, uh, the, the Nissan was packed. You know, of course, we had three of the fan favorites here, Patrick Von Cannell and Sepp Inninger and Kriegel Maurer. You know, they live right down below here. And so they had huge fan base and the, the sportsmanship was through the roof. Twice we had three athletes land within literally seconds of one another. Damien Lacaze, uh, uh, Sepp, no, let's see, uh, Tommy Friedrich, Seaman Oberauer, and uh, Damien Lacaze literally landed within seconds of one another. And then, and that they just stuck it into this. This is not easy top landing up here. And it was pretty windy and it's very rocky and they just made it look so pro. And then Toby and Paul Gusherbauer and who came in with him, uh, was it Tommy, but they just landed within literally seconds of one another, signed the board, were off the hill in, in under a minute. And Tim Alonghi, the acro ace, he has the coolest launch I've ever seen. He launches backwards. It does this kind of flare move. And I mean, the photographers up here were just thrilled. So it was incredibly exciting. I got to fly with Aaron Duragati down the Nissan about 20 K and came back and top landed myself. And so it was a terrific day for me of spectating. And I don't usually like being a spectator, but today was off the hook. It was so exciting. Awesome, Gavin. And, and tell us a little bit, what was the sky like when you, when you flew alongside Aaron? The sky down here to the north has been really good. It's been on all day, nice cloud streets. The flying down the Neeson Ridge was incredibly straightforward for everybody. The flying where Kriegel and Maxime ended up and has put Powell and Tangi and Simone and Aaron on the ground is just it's a proper maelstrom down there. I've been watching the the live weather and the radar and they are just surrounded by big cells, very strong winds on each side of Mont Blanc in varying directions. I would imagine it's really active and I would think even for Kriegel, very scary flying. So uh, they've, they've had a proper battle today. I mean, the last I checked, Kriegel has been in the air for almost eight hours since he left here this morning at 930 and the rest aren't too far behind. I talked to Tangi's supporters. He made the move over to the Volus as several others did, had to hike and land four times. Uh, they, the last time I checked, they were trying to get food and water to him because he didn't have any left, but then the conditions got better and he took off to the, into the sky again. So uh, he's had a tough day. He left here in fourth. He's moved back a couple, but Everybody, I think, especially out front, they've really had a battle. And from what I hear, the weather's not getting any friendlier tomorrow. Can you give a sense of what it's like for Kriegel? I mean, he hasn't slept. I mean, he slept for, for four hours and he's in the air for eight hours. I mean, the exhaustion, I mean, is, can you give a sense of, of what that is like to deal with? Yeah, you know, today when when the when all the leaders came up, because most of them had to hike, a few of them had got to fly the last few hundred meters. You know, they launched above fruit again and, and flew up, but everybody looked pretty tired. The later athletes actually looked really pretty refreshed because they were able to fly a lot more of it. But uh, you can definitely see that it's taken its toll. And I just I was relating to them because I know what this feels like. You know, this is the stage in the race where they have been able to fly a ton. I noticed on the live tracking today that Kriegel's got almost 1100 K under his belt flying and only a hundred on the ground. So, you know, it's not the, it's not the physical uh, exhaustion that I think they're used to, but the, the pace has been just furious. So a big thank you to Gavin. He's really providing some invaluable insights in this race. And I think if, if you haven't had the chance, uh, get onto Facebook and have a look. Gavin was up on Neeson all day uh, filming lives and there's some really uh, spectacular footage there, so which I, I'm sure you'll enjoy. So uh, thanks, Gavin. So one thing that Gavin and I didn't get the opportunity to talk about was an extraordinary battle at the back last night. Four athletes pulled a night pass to avoid the automatic elimination that happens this morning. Uh, Junming Song, amazing. He actually put in, he hiked 60 kilometers, an absolute extraordinary effort. Also, uh, Kinga Mashlalets uh, and Lori uh, Genovese and Rich Binstead all hiked really determinedly uh, through the night to avoid that elimination. And Andre uh, Prohaska, 
uh, from the Czech Republic. That left him in last place. He thought he was safe. Really unlucky for him. Um, I spoke to him and uh, he's disappointed, but he's hoping that maybe he'll be able to come back in two years' time. Uh, and it's sad because he is a, a world champion acro pilot. Um, he's no rookie, really. He's supported Aeron in three editions of this race. Just unfortunate. It shows that when you make a mistake in this race, it can be very, very um, unforgiving. So a lot has happened in the last few hours. Um, if you want to single, if I was to single, single out one athlete as Trace, you should look on live tracking. Go and look at uh, Damien Lacaz. Uh, we're chatting around uh, within the team that that, that is definitely uh, possibly the line of the day. So just I'm not going to say any more on that. Just check it out on uh, live tracking. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, piece that the, the day began with uh, a night pass. It's going to end uh, with a night pass. For the last half an hour, I was uh, hanging out with uh, Team uh, Switzerland with the new supporters of Kriegel, uh, Lars and Sebastian. And, you know, they were, they were, I wouldn't say cocky, but they were saying, yeah, we, we've got Maxime. We like to push Maxime, they said. Well, ha, at eight o'clock, it was declared that Maxime has pulled a night pass. So now it seems that Maxime has the initiative in this extraordinary race at the front. Could it be a replay of a 20... 21, where Maxime Pino and Kriegel Mara flew a wingtip to wingtip and just duked it out. And the last battle to Zelamze. Well, for one thing is for sure, Maxime is not going to let the mistakes that happened two years ago happen again this time. We're in, we're in, we're in store for an absolute treat in this race. So let's finish up with the, uh, the leaderboard, the rankings as of uh, nine o'clock. Uh, so these are, these are actually the live rankings. So in 10th place, currently a Paul Gushelbauer. Uh, Tim Alonji is in 9th. Damien Lacaz is now into 8th place. Simon Oberauner, 7th. Tommy Friedrich is in 6th. Patrick von Kernel, 5th. Paul Takats dropped down to 4th because Aaron Duragati, until just a few moments ago, was still flying. And he's flown himself into 3rd place. Max Pinot uh, is in 2nd place. And Kriegel Mara is currently leading for now. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.